one, boost ignition, and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. What's going on, Falcons fans? Logan here. Welcome back to Rise of Burndown. And if you're new here, welcome. Um, so this video is going to be an extremely fun one because, uh, you know, I was, you know, at work today, just driving to work and thinking about the Falcons per usual. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about like, you know, how did I do in predictions this year? I, you know, I'm a Falcons content creator. I predict how the team is going to do. And I give, you know, Falcons fans an overall feel of how I feel about the team and whatnot. And I'm just scrolling through some of my old videos and... I gotta be honest, man. Um, I'm gonna have to give myself a little, you know, pat on the shoulders because I feel like all my years on Rise Up Rundown, this was the best year I've ever had predicting how the Falcons would do. I just looked at some of my takes and I'm like, damn, like I, I honestly killed it this year. Um, now I have some bad takes and we'll go over them first and you can laugh as much as you want because some of them are embarrassingly funny. Um, and we'll go over how wrong I was there, but then we'll go over the best takes I've had because I gotta be honest, you know, it's not like how in 2020, I, I remember I looked back at my best and worst takes of my 2020 season and my best takes were just kind of like by default, like it wasn't like actually that great of a take, but I sort of got, you know, a great take there. This year's great takes were kind of like, dang, like I'm happy I really saw that. Um, and I just, was happy I kind of said it on video and I have receipts of me saying that is what I'm trying to say. Um, and so we're gonna go over my three worst takes first and then we'll go over my we'll go over my three best takes. So let's get into it. All right, so the first bad take that I had was that Kyle Pitts was gonna get eight plus touchdowns for the season. Now, granted, a lot of people thought Kyle Pitts was going to get a breakout season after getting a thousand yards in his rookie year. Only one touchdown. Um, but I feel like I should have seen this coming uh, because it was even a con in 2021. We were all complaining like, yeah, the Falcons aren't utilizing Kyle Pitts and we got to see him get utilized more. And I should have known that like basically nothing was going to change. Um, here we are still complaining that Kyle Pitts is not getting utilized. I'm pretty sure the Falcons are actually undefeated whenever Kyle Pitts scores a touchdown in a game, but that rarely happens. In 2021, he got only one touchdown despite getting a thousand yards. And then I know he got injured later on in the 2022 season, but still, I'm pretty sure he only got two touchdowns in the 2022 season. Uh, but in every game where he scored a touchdown, we won the game and uh, every game where he absolutely broke out in games like first the Dolphins in 2021, we win the game. So I don't know why the Falcons just kind of look at this and go like, ah, we don't need him. It's kind of frustrating, but uh, every Falcons fan actually has a right to be angry at this because this is literally the first ever player Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot drafted and we're not going to use him. Like we use every other young talent we have. We utilize Drake London. He almost got a thousand yards in his rookie season. Tyler Algier, the rookie, got a thousand yards in his rookie season. Um, and other young players were really developing them. Drew Dahlman is kind of developing. But no, the, the one player we just can't use is the uh, Megatron as a tight end, the unicorn, the freak of nature. Nope, we just, we apparently cannot use Kyle Pitts, but we can use Nicole Pruitt, Michael Pruitt. Um, no, we can use him. Uh, and then in 2021, we can use Lee Smith, but we can't use Kyle Pitts. It's really frustrating that they just don't know how to use this guy. And I hate to say it, but I'm kind of looking at Kyle Pitts like, you know what? I'll believe it when I see it, when it comes to the Falcons utilizing Kyle Pitts. This is kind of like when I said, I'll believe it when I see it, when it comes to the Falcons beating Brady. And they technically did do that this year, but like, Still though, like when people say Kyle Pitts is gonna get utilized this year, I'm like, nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually see it with my own eyes before I believe it because this is just frustrating. And I do think Falcons fans have a right to be angry at this. My second bad take was that the defense was gonna at least be a top 20 unit. Uh, in 2021, the Falcons, according to ESPN, statistically finished the 26th 
out of the 32nd uh, defenses in the NFL. You know how the Falcons finished in 2022? 27th out of 32. So they literally dropped a spot a year after. Um, and it's not like I thought that this defense was really, really going to be awesome. Like, I wasn't really looking at Dean Pease and thinking he was the defensive coordinator to keep for a long time. But I also just thought that we were going to be way better than this. Um, AJ Terrell, like, my guy, like, literally what happened? You came from, like, arguably the best corner in 2021 to then just suddenly, like, he really dropped off. Um, I think he'll bounce back, but, man, that was just a big surprise. Um, Jalen Hawkins, I really like, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they look for his replacement this offseason. Richie Grant's probably going to stay a starter for another year, but he hasn't really looked great. Um, I think we should have kept Foyer Lewican. He literally led the league in tackles the second year in a row, I'm pretty sure. And that could have helped our defense, but it's fine. Um, and then, of course, the pass rush is so self-explanatory. I mean, we, we're getting some great players. Like, Arnold Ebiketti's bringing in some pressures, and I like Lorenzo Carter. Grady Jarrett was a monster in the beginning of the season. He still was fine, like, throughout the rest of the season, but... Um, but I don't know, something about the first half, like, in every single game, he had, like, one big sack to help us win the game. Like, versus the Seahawks, versus the Browns, should have been a big sack to finish the game versus the Bucks. Um, but nope, roughing the passer, right? Um, but anyway, yeah, th this defense just needs a long way to go, and, uh, I think we can fix it. We have a lot of cap space to get in some big names to help our defense, and, Terry Fano is proving he can draft well, so we can fix it relatively quickly, but we need to find a defensive coordinator like Brian Flores or uh, Steve Wilkes, possibly, now that the Panthers got um, Frank Reich at head coach. Steve Wilkes, I'll have to look a little more into him, but maybe he could fix our defense. Brian Flores, it's a good thing I have a twin brother that was a Miami, well, he is a Miami Dolphins fan, and he's pretty familiar with Brian Flores. Could get some uh, knowledge there. Um, and maybe Vic, Vic Fangio comes in. We'll, we'll just see what happens. But yeah, this defense has a long way to go. And then the last bad take I had was saying that Brian Edwards and Jalen Mayfield were going to break out. It's kind of embarrassing because I remember, like, when the Falcons picked up Brian Edwards... I don't want to say I, like, pumped my chest up to you all and was like, don't sleep on Brian Edwards. I was just kind of like, damn, like, people really don't see the potential in Brian Edwards. Well, let me tell you, like, when he was on the Raiders in the first half of the 2021 season, he was awesome. And the Falcons just don't even have great receivers anyway. He's going to get a lot of reps, blah, blah, blah. And the dude literally did nothing. <laughs> like, you guys got me on that one. I know you guys were lower on the Brian Edwards signing. Like, you guys were like... Brian Edwards is good, but not great. And you were like, I don't expect much from Brian Edwards. Yeah, you, you got me there. You you definitely told me what to expect. And I just, I refuse to believe it. And I do apologize. Hands up. I apologize. I, I just thought Brian Edwards was way better than that. Um, and the dude didn't even last a full year with us. Like, he, he actually did nothing. Like, I'm literally not even trying to exaggerate that. But I'm, the dude, like, actually did nothing for us. <laughs> And then Jalen Mayfield, to be fair, like, you know, I wish they at least tried to help him. Like, uh, I just thought that they were going to bring in, like, a veteran over the offseason to, like, make, to start over him, but to teach him how to play left guard. Because I don't think left guard is what Jalen Mayfield played in college, I think. Um, and, you know, with how great the O-line played, like, maybe he did sit out for a year to learn under them because of how great they played. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure Jalen Mayfield did not play at all in 2022. I'm pretty sure. And if he did, uh, for one thing, he didn't do much on the field. And we also never heard his name. But if he never even played a snap, that kind of tells you where we're at here with Jalen Mayfield. <laughs> and where the Falcons are with Jalen Mayfield. Um, fans have literally... I'm not even like trying to joke around. I'm not trying to be funny. Like He actually... The Falcons fans wrote him off. In his first ever freaking game. Not his second game as a as an NFL player. Not his third game. Not his 10th game. Not his 20th game if he even got there. I'm talking about like his first like his first ever game was the first ever game of the 2021 NFL season versus the Eagles at home. His first ever NFL game. El numero uno. 
I, I didn't finish Duolingo, by the way. I'm just pretty sure that's how you say his first ever. Yeah, see, I, I need to finish Duolingo, but um, it was an attempt. Basically, my point is he sucks. He's a bust. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. And, you know, Falcons are probably going to replace him pretty quickly. And that sucks. But let's go over my best takes because I really do feel that these great takes that I've had really, really were like, I, you know, I already gave myself a pat on the shoulders. I won't do it again. But like, I don't know. I, I'm just really proud of this. And my first great take that I've had and maybe, maybe, maybe my best take I've ever had on this Rise Up Rundown channel is saying that the running game would absolutely break out. And I've said it so many times over the offseason, like in my biggest uh, uh, strength, weakness, and potential surprise video, I said that the biggest surprise for the Falcons entering 2022 was going to be the run game. I even made a separate video going over, don't sleep on this run game, it's going to be awesome. And you know what? In my three bolt predictions video for the 2022 Atlanta Falcons, one of them was that the Falcons run game was going to combine for 1,800 yards. Not only did they do, not only did they, not only did they do that, but you know how many rushing yards they got in total? 2,718 freaking yards. Wow. Um, they freaking skyrocketed those expectations. Tyler Algier got a thousand yards as a rookie, somehow only three touchdowns, but a thousand yards as a rookie. Cordero Patterson still kicking ass. And Caleb Puntley looked awesome. Um, and I just, wow, like that, that was an awesome take of mine. I just, that was awesome. The second great take that I had was, according to PFF, the Falcons offensive line finished the fifth best. And I remember saying that the Falcons offensive line was going to be way better than people expected. I, I even made a separate video going over that. Um, and it's not that I, you know, I don't want to like shred... It's, you know, like, I understood why everyone said that the biggest weakness for the Falcons heading into the year was the offensive line. I understand it because, like, yeah, you know, the offensive line was not good the year before. Jalen Mayfield speaks for himself. Caleb McGarry looked like 2022 was going to be his last year with the Falcons. And then uh, the center situation was a mess. Like, you know, I, I get it. It's, I, I didn't look at it and I go, like, oh, my gosh. Like, why would you guys say the offensive line would suck? Like, I was just kind of like, I get it. But I think there's potential. I think Arthur Smith is a good enough coach to turn around this thing. And I think you'll see this thing break out. And I, I really do like some of the players we have. I like Jake Matthews a lot. He still had a great year. Uh, Chris Lindstrom was um, a pro bowler. And then Caleb freaking McGarry. I didn't see that coming, though. I, I will admit that. I didn't think Caleb McGarry was going to have the year he did. Looks like he's going to last another year or two with the Falcons. Uh, the center situation, actually, Matt Hennessy didn't even become the starter for the center. It was actually Drew Dullman, and he did okay. He's just got to fix that low snap thing going on. But the left guard is a bit of an issue. But point is, the Falcons' offensive line, I knew that there was potential. And, you know, I would say that, like, that was a, that was a pretty good call with saying that the offensive line was going to be a little better than everyone expected. And then the third great take that I had for the 2022 Atlanta Falcons season was overall my record predictions for the Falcons held up very well in my uh you know three scheduled predictions video on this rise up rundown channel I said at best I think that this Falcons team can get eight wins I don't see them going higher than that and man they really came close but they got seven wins uh but still though I said that that was probably best case scenario is that they get eight wins and then going over each game, I almost predicted, like, at least the first half pretty accurately. Like, I said that they were going to lose the first two games of the season. Then they would win the two games after that versus the Seahawks and then the Browns. Then lose to the Bucks. Then, I think I said, win to the 49ers, at least in one of the three scheduled predictions videos. Then lose to the Bengals. Um, and I'm, I'm forgetting the rest, but, like... I remember I said that we weren't going to sweep the Panthers. I knew we were going to drop one game to them. Granted, we probably should have lost both of them. But um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, those schedule predictions actually aged pretty well. And then on my literal, like, set it in stone video, like, 
on my L2 Sports channel, my overall NFL 2022 predictions, going over every single team, I said that the Falcons were going to finish with seven wins. And they actually did. They actually did finish with seven wins. Now, I thought they were going to finish third in the division. They actually finished last. But um, but still, though, I said that they were going to finish with seven wins, and they did. So um, overall, I'm really happy with how I predicted this team. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And let's have a great 2023. Uh, let me know some of your best and worst takes in the comments below. I would love to hear them because you guys have some great takes as well. I've seen them. I, just, I might not reply to the comments like I used to. But I, I promise I'm reading the comments. And some of you have some sneaky good takes. Um, but let me know what some of your best and worst takes were. And let's have a great 2023. Stay safe. Love and appreciate you all for the support. Sincerely. Um, and I hope all of you are doing well. Because life goes on. And life gets tougher. Uh, but it's just about, you know, staying strong up here. Um, and I hope you all are just doing well. Mentally, physically. All of it. Um, I really appreciate it because we're about to be four years of Rise Up Rundown. And you guys, um, I don't know. I mean, you just keep me going, man. Uh, I really appreciate every single Tuesday and Friday just, you know, looking up to seeing you, you guys speak. And uh, it's, it's just fun to interact with you all. Um, but um, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, and again, I just, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I just hope that you all are doing well. Um, and thank you again. Uh, rise up and stay safe.